The gate that I'm going to demonstrate now is the hemiparetic gate. Um, this gate, if we were to, uh, to again, demonstrate it, we need to be able to show the extension of the leg and internal rotation. So the leg is too long. We get circumduction with the paretic side. But very importantly as well is that the upper extremity is very much involved. And so there's adduction of the shoulder, flexion of the elbow, pronation of the wrist, the thumb is tucked under, and a cortical fist. So this is the position of the hemiparetic gait, with the other side being normal, having normal associative movements. You can actually hear the pattern of the gait as well, as we have circumduction for the paretic side. Again, watching upper extremity postured into the, the decorticate posture, lower extremity is actually circumducted coming around. The next gate is the spastic diplegic gate. In this particular gate, both lower extremities are affected, and the lower extremities are affected more than the upper extremities. So the posture, the position in this particular gate is there's flexion at the hips, flexion at the knees, and the feet or the ankles are extended and internally rotated, and this, and the, um, was also uh, tight adductors, so there's adduction at the knees. So it is a swinging gait with both sides, both lower extremities. You can hear a different pattern in the hemiparetic gait. But this is not all. The upper extremities are also involved, again, not as much as the hemiparetic gait, but for the upper extremities, the extremity is carried in a, in a low guard or a mid guard position, and you don't have the normal associated movements in the upper extremity. So this would be the type of posture and type of position that one would see for the spastic diplegic. The next gait is going to be that of a neuropathic gait in which the distal lower extremity is affected. For this particular gait, the, uh, the person has the inability to dorsiflex the foot, and so the foot is actually a foot drop, and the person must step high in order to clear the foot. So if I don't step high enough, I'm going to drag the toe of the shoe, and so what um, happens is the person steps high to be able to clear the foot. As the foot drags or as the foot drop position. This gait is a myopathic gait. Uh, with myopathies, usually we have weakness in the pelvic girdle region. And as I walk, if I can't stabilize my pelvis, then what ends up happening is, is that for the weight-bearing leg, I'm trying to stabilize the hip, and I'm coming off with the other, the pelvis will then dip or drop towards the non-bearing extremity. Now, if I continue in this attitude, I'll fall. In order to compensate for that, I'm going to shift my weight and I'm going to try to put it over the weight-bearing leg. And so I'm going to actually swing the body towards weight-bearing leg and trying to get hyperlordotic and lock back over the, uh, the hip that's stabilizing or is, is, is actually supporting the weight. So what this will happen is, is that there will be a waddle as the pelvis will actually drop, come back up, drop on the other side, and go back and forth instead of being nice and perpendicular to where it, sh it should be um, to, the way to the leg. So, Again, this is what it would look like if I'm, if I'm going to walk. As I take this step, the pelvis will drop. I'll shift this way. And then as I come through, I'll shift this way. The pelvis will drop on the opposite side. And there will be a waddle. I'm in the hyperlordotic position, trying to maintain my balance. Okay. So the, the pelvis drops, shifting to the opposite side.
This gate is the gate that is a hypokinetic gate. Um, the prototype uh, is Parkinson's um, or Parkinsonian type of gate in which the patient will have a posture which will be stooped over, leaning forward, and then will have difficulty as far as initiating gait. When the gait is initiated, there are small steps. Oftentimes there's a, there's a tremor associated with this. And as the gait progresses, there may be a picking up of speed or what's called a fenestrated gait. And then in turning, instead of having the normal turning, the patient will turn on block, which means they'll turn almost as a statue moving around. And then again having difficulty starting in the marsh petty paw. As opposed to the hypokinetic gait, we now have the hyperkinetic gait, which we see um, what we call a choreiform gait, or chorea. With this gait, there are not only abnormalities in the gait itself, but associated movements. There can be uh, oral facial dyskinesias in which the patient, which will be having movements of one side or the other side of the face, kind of a grimacing type of a fashion. There can be movements in the upper extremities and there are fragments of semi-purposeful type of movements or writhing type of movements. And then the legs will also start to go. And so the patient attempts to walk, get the superimposition of the, move, of the movements, but the patient doesn't actually fall because the balance is not affected. Just you have these involuntary movements that are now being superimposed on the gait. The last gait that I'm going to demonstrate is the ataxic gait. In the ataxic gait, the patient has difficulty narrowing the station and maintaining balance. So typically they'll have a wide stance that's trying to maintain balance and that there oftentimes will be uh, unsteadiness in the trunk. So there may be some truncal titubation, which is an anterior posterior to have a tremor at about three hertz. And there's also a tendency to, to lunge or to uh, jerk sideways, and the patient then has to catch themselves. Now, of course, one of the ways to bring out this particular type of problem is to narrow the station, asking the patient to walk tandem. So if I then am ataxic, I then try to walk tandem, then I'm going to have d difficulty walking. over to the other side, yeah, that side, there you go. And then walk back over here to this side. And then walk back over to the clear over the other side. And then walk back to the middle. And we're done.
So I will just take my hand here, and we'll just move it off of here. Okay, that's fine. You have to balance. Switch hands. Okay, that's right. That's fine. Let's go. Let's go back. 